Thank you, Dean. I have here in their practice space, Terry Green. Could you introduce yourselves? My name is Adrian. My name is Adam. I'm Matt. Lewis. Thank you for having this interview with me tonight. Um, what is Terry Green? Terry Green, uh, we're a band from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. We started in 2014, 2014, January 2014, we had our first practice. Also, the first time we met our drummer, Adam. We are a post-hardcore band, uh, and we play shows and music. So, guys, uh, for anybody that hasn't listened to your music before, how would you describe it? Rock and roll for lonely souls. <laughs> uh, like Adrian said, the best descriptor would probably be post-hardcore. There's a little bit of scream on there. There's a little bit of math rock. Uh, a little bit of noise as of late. Yeah. yeah. We feel the 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 more like a cake it is, you know, you put more ingredients into a cake and it's a better cake, yeah. right? You know, we feel the same way it's a band, you know. If you've ever if you ever made a cake with just eggs and flour, it's terrible. It's not very good. But when you add uh when you you know, when you add art and dance and um <laughs> Band is ca cake is uh, better at the end. <laughs> That's legit. Okay. So you guys have a new album coming out soon. Do you guys want to uh, maybe share some details about yeah, that? Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's not very long. It's, you know, it's only six tracks. Okay. You know, last one is a last last track is actually like three tracks. About four hours long. It's actually six tracks, but the last track's like three tracks. So you're really getting nine tracks, but you're paying for six. People so it's a really good deal we have. It's interesting. People are always walking up to us at the merch table and saying, "It's only you've only got six tracks. Why are you charging so much money for it?" I say, "You're actually getting nine, but not, nine tracks. You're actually getting nine tracks, Dean. That's the interesting thing. If you're listening to such albums as um, The Dark Side of the Moon, for example, by Pink Floyd, that's only has about five tracks, and you pay sometimes thirty, forty dollars for an original copy of that. So I think it's good value for your money. First track is sort of you know we 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 get right in there and we start. Uh, we, right, uh, right out of the gate. No nonsense no rock nonsense. and roll right from the top. We got some more straightforward rock tracks. We've got some nice ambient, melodic stuff. It's really just a great album, and I, I think you should buy it. Dude. I think you should buy it. Oh, I'm, def I'm one of the first to buy it. Thank I'm you. One of the first. Any other details? Anything like else about the album? Um, what What is it called? Well, When's it coming out? I don't want to spoil anything, but we are getting a big time celebrity to uh, put the finishing touches on it yeah i, I don't want to give anything away but this is just a teaser for you guys we got a real dean sir talks exclusive yeah we got a real a-lister that's going to be featured on this record a-list screamo no, not, not even screamo just think celebrity in general it's probably like right up there with barack obama and yeah all the other greats you guys still uh, haven't decided on a title or anything like that? We went into this with a mind frame that, like, you know what, we're going to use today's technology and we're going to use the best technology we have to record this album because, like, why not, right, if it's available to you? So, D, I, like, sometimes there's two... I'm, it's just me. I'm the only guitarist in this band, but sometimes there's two guitars. D, I think there's at one point there's three guitars going on at once. <laughs> so, um... I feel like just for us, like, emotionally, it was a really important thing to put out. Especially just giving the consumer the value that they expect from the Terry Green brand. For us, I think that was the most the, important the, the part. Person. With visiting hours, it was just, all right, we got a bassist, a guitarist, a drummer, and a vocalist. We're going and making an album. Not anymore. You know, we're taking a lot of uh, uh, skills from our personal lives and previous experiences. Like, Lewis, uh, he's a software guy. A master of code. He's a code guy. <laughs> so you're going to find that on the album in the, in the packaging and whatnot. And my project management skills, you know. I want to put this out there for the whole world. This guy's been turning my life around with his project management skills. Mm -hmm. He's had these Gantt charts whipped up for me. Every yeah. day of my life is all laid out, and I just have to thank him so much. Every day I just whip up a spreadsheet or a Gantt chart, you know, really. <laughs> it's really helped uh, the album. You're really going above and beyond the status quo here. It's amazing doing. what you guys are doing. We do not disappoint. Terry Green is about value. It's about respecting the consumer. And I promise you, I will never lie to you. Well, you know, uh, these past couple of months have been hard on, you know, just about everyone. It's, it's a crazy time today especially us. in society, especially for me personally. Uh, I'm going through a lot of problems right now. And sometimes you just need a good escape from that, you know, and nothing more than an album, you know, that uh, the albums I like the most are the ones that make me laugh because I need a laugh right now, because things are not going well, you know? <laughs> Shit just got really dark here, folks. When you're recording music, what are the main influences that you take into consideration? What are your main... It depends on 
you mean this record? For for this record specifically. For this one specifically. I kind of just wanted to make it more live. Last thing we did was like with a click track, which was cool, but we didn't really vibe with it. And we just, you know, just as live and as loud as possible. Getting the noise stuff in there. Our live show has changed a lot. I'd just like to mention that uh, when we were planning on recording this, the thing that I had in mind was that was like, oh, we're going to drop like a lot of money. We're going to go to like a real studio. We're going to make this sound nice. We realized we don't really have money. <laughs> so we did a little uh, a getaway following uh, capping off the month of August, a very eventful summer for us. But it didn't leave us in the best of financial situations. If I could put it that way, the margins were all off. There was a lot of bad investments. So yeah, you know, this album, it didn't cost much, but don't let that fool you folks. It's a good record. I, I still think that um, even though we didn't put like a, a, like so much money into it, like we didn't go to a real studio, we got the sound that we had intended uh, much, much better that way. Because uh, we wanted it to just sound loud. We wanted it to sound raw and live and... Uh, if we were, I thought if we put a lot of money in that, uh, then everything that we wanted it to sound like would, it would just not sound like that. So I think, uh, we, we got it the way we wanted to. Yeah. Dollar for dollar. We definitely were more cost effective as cost effective as possible while still producing what we believe to be a quality album. Yeah. Uh, when we were recording, um, there's a lot more noise stuff on this album. Um, bands like Destruction Unit, Cult Ritual bands where like the noise is like a big part of it and like a part of the like cohesion of the album that stuff is all like kind of you know rolling around the brains i think all right now we'll take it back to dean at the basement for his album review take it away dean thanks dean all right we're back with terry green <laughs> we're back with terry green all right now we're gonna do an open discussion there are no rules you can say whatever you like any cusses uh, I just want to know what you guys are listening to and enjoying right now. Could be anything, Gregorian chant, Little B, anybody. Okay, if you want a serious answer, I was thinking about two albums, and uh, I got I really like the new Joyce Manor. Yeah, I know you could say it. you could pff, all you want. Well, does it? Okay, the only thing about that that album is that it has that really cheesy Kanye West. Okay, line. all right, that's not the golden point of that album. <laughs> I think it's a great, fun record that I enjoy because I have my guilty pleasures too. There's no such thing as guilty. Shut pleasures. Shut the though. fuck up, Dean. No, I'm serious. Also, the new Jillian Carter record, probably the best heavy record I've heard all year. Bless. Great record, pretty short, and uh, is really aggressive. There's uh, the band Slowmass from Chicago, a, a, a super group of sorts with uh, members of My Dad and Intuit Over It and uh, various other groups. They put out a very good EP, Treasure Pains, this year, and yeah, it's really good. I've, uh, you know, like Lewis brought up, Destruction Unit, I started listening to them a while back, and from that, it's just been like a bunch of other noisy stuff, and on the their label mates as well, Sacred Bones Records. I've been listening to a lot of their releases, so like The Men. Give a quick shout out to Growing Thins, our mm. best friends. We love those guys. They're my favorite friends in the whole world. Their new record's fucking sick. Uh, we saw them, played with them like about a year ago, and I thought they were awesome, and their record's awesome. Some of the best music of this generation is being created right here in Southern Ontario. So you know, that you got Growing Thins, you got huge cosmic you got terry green worst things that you have heard for this year 2016 i've been listening to a lot of steve Earle. um it's not very good music i still listen to it a lot of just really not good country music low quality but it does turn your brain off and that's probably that's the most important thing to me right now put it right on there just shut off mentally it feels really good yeah, i've been listening to a, a little bit more jefferson airplane and grateful dead than i'd care to admit <laughs> so that's what i've been listening to what about you, Adrian? Um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really heard anything I don't like that I kept listening to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that new Dillinger Escape Plan record isn't the best record they put out, but it's not bad. I haven't listened to that yet. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I don't know. Everyone's saying it's their best record. I don't think so. There, but I, I've been trying to get into Sonic Youth because I was never really into that band, and I just keep trying to listen to them, and I've listened to a lot of albums by them, and it's just not doing it for me. I don't know. Theoretically, I should love that band, really right? But. I like uh, Sonic Youth, but I feel that only certain albums I'll dig. Like what? Daydream Nation, Goo is okay. It was like the one that it kind of broke out with, right? Yeah. That was Goo. Uh, All the other stuff, like it's kind of just like, eh, all right. Yeah. Whenever. Also, when I hear any like solo Thurston Moore kind of uh, uh, album, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. 
is uh, it all comes back to me and Lil Wayne, right? Because like, if you're listening to an artist like a couple times a week, you know their lyrics, you you look forward to hearing their songs. Is it still a bad artist to you? But, you know, because that's what I do with Lil Wayne. By the fact, is it isn't it isn't it funny to you when someone's putting in such an effort to something and it's just that so sucks. like it's just not good. A year ago, I hated a lot of bands and I would actively hate them and I would say rude things on the internet and then I just stopped and I was like, why am I doing this? Like. Why, why do I keep commenting on turnstile videos saying this is so bad, you know? I should just just forget about that, you know? Fuck it, just let, they're not hurting anybody, you know? I heard a comment on a podcast I was listening to where, I mean, if, if you think about uh, a band like them, if they're doing this well, they've got to be good people. I mean, you can't get very well, far as being uh, a terrible person. Uh, uh, that, that's kind uh, of... We'll see opposite. <laughs> I mean, you could you could say that about a lot of bands, but like, look at Black Veil Brides. Look at all these like metalcore bands. Okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe so. Are you saying Turnstile are bad people? No, no, we're saying I'm that. Just, I'm just messing. We're around. saying that the guarantee of of being successful is not the guarantee of being a nice person. I hate, I hate this interview. Like, so probably the <laughs> Three part question. One: What is your favorite artist? That you grew to love in 2016. What is your favorite band that you've played with live in the past? And what is your dream artist to play with live? Uh, one band that I love playing with live uh, was uh, we did some shows with Nouveau. Those guys are great. Uh, we, we played like four or five, four shows, four shows with them this year. They're from Chicago. They're great. Uh, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it to these guys. Realistic or no? Realistically, I guess. Nah, yeah. realistic, realistic, not realistic. I, I well, not realistic fucking Metallica, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Band I grew to love this year. Mm -hmm. Um. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clapton. If I were to just, like, if I was on my way home and I, like, popped in music, I can only listen to one thing anymore, and that's Destruction Unit's uh, live in San Francisco album. I guess, them, like, it's literally the only thing I can listen to anymore. Everything else is just too boring or. I don't know. It's a it's a bad it's a bad phase right now. Like I wish I wasn't that way, but it's the only thing I can stand right now. It's fucked. I hope I get over this real soon. But um, favorite band that we've ever played with. Uh, we played in Waterloo with Congratulations. It was like a Congratulations reunion show, and Congratulations set was one of the best like post hardcore sets I've ever seen in my life. Like top five. It was so amazing that night. Realistic band I want to play with is Congratulations again. We did two shows with Jillian Carter from Florida. Uh, they put on a really great show. They have, the they, have the, they have the lights going and everything. He's got the the guitar with the with the screwdriver slide and everything. And they've got the tone. They've got the big big drum sound and everything. And they're they're a very great live band. Definitely one of my favorite performances that I've seen from this year. Great people. I saw their bass player at an Applebee's, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and we didn't say anything. And that's my story for Jillian Carter. <laughs> band I grew to love this year. I've been listening to a lot of 80s music for some reason. Nice. I used to really dislike 80s music, but I really like The Cure now for some reason. They're a great band. Band I want to play with is a band we have played with, but I want to see them again is Loom because nice. those guys are fantastic. So we're hoping to see them back in Canada soon. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a Towns Van Zandt obsession right now. Word. It's pretty much the only thing I listen to anymore. Uh, it's bad, man. Like I, I'm listening to like bootlegs and shit. He's like a like a folk country musician. Okay. Yeah, man, he's amazing. I love love him. If you like like that kind of music at all, like it's amazing. Like he's such a good songwriter. Um, just as like a lyricist too. Like he's really subtle and like really good at not being like, over the top and letting things play kind of quietly. Band I like to play with. I don't know, man. I don't want to play with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> You got any more questions? Bonus questions. Yeah. Bonus yeah, bon questions. Bonus questions. Okay. Favorite video game, favorite animal. We all know this guy. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII and oh, dog. Fucking animal. <laughs> I don't really play many video games, so I can't really. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> My all time favorite video game is Sneak Sorry. King. Sneak uh. King by Burger King. At the moment, it is Skyrim going through another phase. I play Skyrim in like phases, like where I'll do it for two months and nothing else. So right now I'm doing like Daedric quests. Uh, my favorite animal is this guy. Wow, that's fucking All time, it's probably uh, a capybara. Aw, oh, dude. I'm just going to clear the air. Uh, this might be a little controversial. I don't really give a shit about animals. 
pigs, horses, shit like that. It doesn't really do anything for me. I love video games, though. If animals made video games, they might be <laughs> doing a little better in my books. <laughs> I watch a lot of people play Minecraft on YouTube <laughs> because it makes me feel nothing. The best part and I can't feel not, very much right now. He is totally serious. He's not joking. If you're looking for the, the Southern Pastor Terry Green, this is really we should have put this in the beginning of the video as a disclaimer for anyone looking for disclaimer. Other. We'll probably we'll probably put this in the beginning. You can work your techno magic, yeah, with your do, blibble blabble on the computer. Right. You know? If you're looking for the Southern Baptist Pastor Terry Green, you're out of luck, pal. If you're looking for the R&B singer Terry Green, you're out of luck, pal. If you're looking for the voice of every supermarket in the UK, you're out of luck, pal. If you're looking for your estranged cousin Terry Green, you're out of luck. We are not Terry Green. Most of the people looking for Terry Green are looking for a pastor or an R&B singer. Stop messaging us. It's alarming the messages we get on our page. <laughs> And we can put them up the messages, you know. I'm just saying maybe, you know, not everyone's profile picture on Facebook is them, you know. Sometimes it's a sweet car. Sometimes it's a sweet landscape like this guy, I know. All right, so that's it for our interview. Uh, all of the interview, <laughs> slightly edited version of this interview is going to be on uh, the YouTube channel. You can s subscribe. There are links below. And, yeah, Terry Green. Thank you, guys. Good stuff. Good stuff. Just after the interview ends, can we still talk, or is is that kind of just yeah? You shut down and you head out. No, no, no I'm not gonna leave you.